What's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be talking about finding outliers in quantitative data. You can't have outliers in categorical data. It doesn't make sense when you're working with words. Outliers only exist when you're working with quantitative data. So let's talk about two different ways to identify outliers. One is like the official way to do it. Another one is like an optional way, but of course I'm gonna recommend the official way. Basically, here's the official way to find outliers. You start off by finding what we call the fences, right? So we have what we call an upper fence and a lower fence, all right? And to find these fictional imaginary fences, very simple formula. The upper fence is your third quartile plus 1.5 times the IQR. The lower fence is your first quartile minus 1.5 times the IQR. So once you find these two values, your upper fence, and your lower fence, you simply look at your data. And if you have any data larger than the upper fence, it's an outlier any values lower than the lower fence, it's an outlier. Now, every year I get the question, well, what happens if you're on the fence? First off, very unlikely to ever happen. But if it does happen, that would not be an outlier. It's on the fence. You need to be above or below the lower and upper fences to be outliers. So it's actually really, really easy. Don't overcomplicate this. It's a very simple formula. Obviously, you do need to know Q1 and Q3 and the IQR. Well, don't forget, IQR is simply the difference of Q3 minus Q1. So really, the only two numbers you need to establish your fences are Q3 and Q1. They're both required to find the fences, and then you subtract them. And when you subtract them, that's your IQR, which is also required in these formulas. But again, these are just two numbers. You don't graph them, you don't plot them, they're just imaginary numbers. I mean, I say imaginary, right? Don't, don't think about algebra two, algebra numbers, please. But they're just values that we use to say, hey, if anything's bigger than the upper fence, you're an outlier. Anything lower than the upper fence, or anything lower than the lower fence is an outlier. So let's quickly show how easy this is to do. Uh, I know it's very small, but I wanted to fit in one line. But here is a set of 31 numbers, a uh, big set of values there, or actually, um, yeah, 31 numbers, I believe. Don't worry about counting them. But anyway, I went ahead and did all the hard work for you. So here is what we call the statistical analysis. I, I do think it's actually worth me showing you real quick how I got these values on my calculator. So very, very simple, very, very easy to do. All right, the first thing you have to do is enter it into your calculator. So stat edit. Once again, enter it all into a list. It doesn't matter which list you use. I use list two, just because I had some data already in list one. So I entered all 31 values, double, triple checked, I entered them in right. And then stat, slide over to calc, one variable stats. Make sure you choose the list where your data is. So I did list two, so I'm gonna hit second, number two to get list two in there. Leave the frequency list blank, hit calculate, and boom, there's everything you need. The mean, is the X bar, S is the 21.059, that's the standard deviation. Keep scrolling down for your five number summary, the min, Q1, the median, Q3, and of course the max. So very easy to get all of this on your calculator very simply. All right, so now to identify if any of these values are outliers, I'm simply going to find the lower fence first. I'm going to take the min, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna take Q1, 12. I'm gonna subtract 1.5 times the IQR. So I gotta quickly calculate the IQR. The IQR is the only thing the calculator does not do for you. 30 minus 12, which is very easy to do. Q3 minus Q1 is 18. So I'm gonna multiply that right there. Now I'm again gonna go back to my calculator. I'm gonna type in 12 minus 1.5 times 18 and I get negative 15. Now, if any value is lower than negative 15, it's a lower outlier. Well, obviously my lowest value is 10, so there's no way I have anything that is lower than negative 15, so there are no outliers on the low end. What about that upper fence? This time I'm gonna take Q3, 30, add 1.5 times the IQR of 18. Go ahead and get that upper fence, 30, plus 1.5 times 18 is 57. So any value that is greater than 57 is officially gonna be an outlier. So it looks like 68, 70, and 99. I'm gonna write those a little bit bigger. 68, 70, into 99 would all be considered official outliers. 
values that are very big in the data. Now, it's worth me explaining, right, what I'm trying to make sure I'm hammering home in all these videos. Because of these outliers on the upper end, notice the mean is significantly bigger than the median. So this happens when you have outliers on the upper end. So these three very large values compared to everybody else are going to impact the mean because they direct the mean, all right, to calculate the mean, you add up all the numbers. And that 68, that 7 to 99 are really dominating that total sum. That's why the mean is going to be closer towards them. So that's why the mean is definitely higher than the medium, which is a, um, which is, um, also tells me that on my data is going to be skewed to the right. Anytime your median is lower than the mean or the mean gets skewed higher, that's a sign that your data is probably going to be skewed right. All right, let's talk about a second way to identify outliers. What I just talked about with the offenses, the official. So like on a test, on a quiz, if you're asked to identify outliers, please use the fences. But I, this is really important to understand as well. Another way to identify outliers is using the mean and the standard deviation. We have told you several times that in a data set, most data is within one standard deviation of the mean. Most data. So, you know, I'll give you a quick example here. If your mean is 60 and your standard deviation is 6, that means most data is going to be 54 to 66. Most data will fall in that range. Well, if a data point is well outside of that range, maybe two or three standard deviations, then that is really, really weird. And that would be considered an outlier. So listen, most data is going to be 54 to 66. There's definitely going to be some data above and some data below. That's not weird. But if we are two or three standard deviations above the mean, now we start to be really, really weird. So once again, let me calculate that, right? Once again, the mean is 60, standard deviation is six. So for example, two standard deviations would be 12 up, 12 down. Go up six twice, go down six twice. So that would be going up to 72 or down. If I go 60 down, that'd be 48. So anything that is outside of those numbers, that is starting to become really unusual. That doesn't happen. Or again, most data is within one standard deviation. So if you are outside of that, you're already in the minority. But if you're outside of two, then you're really in the minority, right? And we can even go a step further. If we go three standard deviations, which would be six, 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 eight, oh, that's kind of bad, sorry. But 18, right? 18 would be three standard deviations. So that would be 78. And if I go 60 minus 18, I'm at 42. So if you are outside of that, you are very, very weird. If you have any data values that's outside three standard deviations, that would definitely be considered outliers for sure. So let's go back to that same example we saw earlier, but instead of using the fence method, let's use the mean and the standard deviation. So first, let's talk about what is very normal. So if we talk about the 25.316 and we go up or we go down one standard deviation, so that's 21.059. So I'm adding, I'm subtracting one standard deviation. This was my standard deviation. Now I'm going to grab a calculator for this with the decimals. It's not quite as easy for me. 25.316, if I go down 21.059, that takes me down to 4.0. 257. And then if I go up a standard deviation, so this time I'm going to add the 21.059, I get 46.375. So this is normal. Most data falls in this range. So if you think about it, if I, if I put some markers, four is going to be somewhere below my min. 46 is somewhere right around here between 40 and 52. So I'm pretty sure I was correct when I said most data, a large chunk of data, literally look at it, almost all of my data is in between 4.257 and 46.375. Okay, that is why now if we go ahead and take our mean 
and we add and we subtract two standard deviations, this is when we become really strange. So now if I go 25.316 uh, minus 2 times 21.059, I get negative 16.802. And then let me add it as well. Sorry for my messy handwriting today. Uh, if I add it today, we get um, 67.434. Again, all I'm doing is adding 2 and subtracting 2 standard deviations. And then again, this means we go over lower. So negative 16 would be way down here somewhere. 67 would be somewhere right here. And again, now, we, now we've even captured more data. We actually grabbed that 52 now. And anything outside of that would definitely start to become strange. And that's why we would say, yeah, that 68, that 70, that 99, that is really weird. Those values are extremely high. They're not just one. They're more than two standard deviations above the mean. We didn't have any weird low numbers. Like our, our min was 10, and 10 was in that totally normal, totally cool range. So 10 wasn't weird at all. But again, the 68, the 70, 99, that was pretty weird. But I want to say one more time, using the fences is really like the textbook definition for proving, hey, that number's an outlier, that's not. But this is also another way that we like to do it as well. And it, it should make sense to you if you truly understand the definition of standard deviation is how far data is from the mean, down or up. All right, guys, that's it for outliers. Pretty simple stuff.